is my privilege to share God's word with you again this Sunday. So let's begin with prayer. Lord, we invite you, your presence as we explore your word. Let us let it ha your word have its way in our lives so that we can have families set on the solid foundation of your word in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Last week, we focused our attention on the main man in the home under the title, Fathers Chosen for a Purpose. Today, we want to focus our attention on the women in the home under the title, Mothering Like God. Of course, this can be a very controversial title because the scriptures generally use the masculine gender to describe God. However, there are several images in the scripture that use the feminine gender to describe the character of God and how he relates to his people. Take the gender sensitivities out of this sermon so that you can learn from God how to be the effective woman in the home and the family. We will consider several verses to carry this Im that carry this image to highlight what it looks like to be the mother. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Isaiah's words were written more than 700 years before the birth of Christ. Israel had fallen from the Lord and Isaiah was called by God to tell God's people uh, people of the of God's wrath, God's punishment that was coming, but also to give them a promise of hope. You see, it is in the co this context that God, as a God of comfort, is is proclaimed by Isaiah. He speaks to people who have been beaten by their own disobedience. They ending up in captivity. Of course, his. He, God is the one who has allowed them to be overtaken by their enemies. Mm -hmm. It was the consequence of, of their sin of the nation. But now he demonstrates that he does not give up on his people. He speaks comforting words to his own. We do know that God will punish disobedience. But he also has open arms, always inviting us to come back. And when we come back, he's, 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 he receives those that come back in repentance to him. Of course... A day is coming when this grace period will be over. And so it's time to take advantage of the grace period. Now, God, the picture that God displays in, in this relationship is a common picture for parenting children. And we see it in many mothers and fathers. I have seen this picture over and over when a mother displays a child. A child, a child, so first of all, runs away crying. But then mother draws back the child and cuddles the child who herself has punished. This is part of the role of motherhood and parenting in general. Parents do not run away from discipline, which is often painful for the child, but parents also never lose compassion for their children. They are the comforters of their family in times of pain. Earlier on in Isaiah 49, verse 15 to 16, Isaiah says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast or have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands and your walls are ever before me. Now, this verse is literally saying that God is the image of motherhood per excellence. Ordinary mothers pay attention to every detail of their child. They take care of their children. They never lose sight of their children. They keep an eye on their children constantly. This is what is expected of a mother. And I, what the, this text is saying us, us is that God excels at this, his care of his children. The second text is, is Hosea chapter 11 verse 3. It says, it is I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them uh, with the, the, the words of kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts the little child to the, che to the cheek and I bent down to feed them. You see the verse highlights God's nurturing role. The image is one of a mom who diligently nurses, nurtures his children, caring their, for their every need. This image of, of motherhood is used to display the image of God. Of course, uh, uh, true motherhood displays this image. Of course, in our generation, we have many mothers who don't play this image, who don't fulfill this role. I am told that some of the babies on our streets are, are, are being hired out for the day to be used for begging. Can you ima imagine a mother who, 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 give, who hires out their child to be kept in the sun in the day to be used for begging? Now, we have many mothers who have babies and dump them with grandma. It is this who is old and has become weak. Please do not have babies for your mother. Your mother has had her babies, 
have babies for yourself and when you have babies take care of the responsibility of nurturing them this is a role of, of this role of nurturing uh Haiyang is pictured again by comparing god to the common image of an eagle in Deuteronomy 32 verse 11 to 12 like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. The Lord alone led him. No foreign god was with him. Now, if you live in Uganda, you have seen this image of a mother eagle hovering over her, her young. The eagle disrupts the, image, the, the, the nest of its young, ripping it open out of their place of comfort. And the, 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 the eagles start to, to really uh, uh, struggle in the air. And the mother really hovers over, make sure they, they don't fall and ensures they are protected. But in the process, they are learning how to fly for themselves. Mother eagle goes through this routine of training of its young until they can fly on their own. Now, today's home is desperately in need of this kind of mother who trains her children on how to cope with life, how to map out their own destiny without mama's input because uh, 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 mama, you know, many mothers are not playing this role because they're out there looking for money. I would like to appeal to the ladies in this congregation who are taking, I would like to applaud the ladies listening to me who are taking time to care for their own or who care for others who are not their own. They will have many single ladies who are taking care of children not their own. And we like to applaud you and thank God for you. And, and, and we pray that there will be many more who embrace this, this picture of motherhood. Now, young ladies who are having babies, you cannot start having babies before you've put structure in place for their protection, their welfare. You, 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 you have them, the resources to take care of them. You have a, a father for them. So it's, we begin with a father. We don't begin with the children. Children cannot be an accident. I, I, I bumped into a young lady uh, uh, who used to come to this church many years ago, and she was uh, clearly pregnant, and I hadn't heard that she was married. And she says, Musumba, munange nalimbi pinga, nevanku atirayo. And for her, uh, sex was just uh, like beeping. No, 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 no. This is sexuality is a responsible uh, agenda. You don't just jump into it. You bring children who you are, you are prepared to take care of. So I'd like to, 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 to just quickly highlight seven things that I want you to walk away with from our reflection today. One is that you are val valuable. You have, if you have forgotten your value as a mother, this picture that we've been talking about of God uh, as a, in a picture of motherhood validates you. Have a special place in the welfare of children. You have a unique privilege uh, to leave a mark of strength uh, to, 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 in your guidance, your spiritual favor, to leave that uh, uh, literally limited on the children that go through your, your path whether they are owned by your biological children or whether they are children that, that just have God has placed into your path. Two, be thankful for your mother. If you have forgotten to value your own mother or the person who fulfilled that role of motherhood, as a, or who maybe they were an auntie or a grandmother, I want to ask you to call them today. Be thankful for the mother that God placed in your, in your life. Three, be thankful for God's watch care of your life. He does and will do more than any earthly mother in care of you. Remember that God uses the maternal symbol in the passages we've been talking about to represent his own ability to comfort his children. The father still comforts better than any earthly mother. He loves better than any maternal figure on the planet. He has paid every price for you. Be thankful for God's watch care over you. And four, model your life after God. We are called to model our life after God the Father who has compassion and is a God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble with the comfort that we have received ourselves. Therefore, it is time to apply this in your own life by being a comforter to those that God has placed in your life. And then number five, to denounce carelessness. If you're one of those who are careless mothers or careless fathers, you, who does not care for your children, then it is time to repent. Young lady, young man, children should not be an accident. They should be part of a secure relationship. If you're a careless mother, be, uh, 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 it's time to repent. 
But also, number six, be a nurturing parent. Be deliberate in training your children and to help them map out their destiny. Take seriously the role of nurturing the next generation. And lastly, number seven, then those who have no mothers, whose mothers are, are absent, find the mother figure in the church. Let this be a place where this aspect of God is played out in our relationship so that individuals in our congregation, congregation without a mother can find one. You can play, not play this role for every child without a mother, but you can play it for one. Prayerfully think about those who has, God has, has placed around you who miss this picture of, of, of fatherhood and start to look to be one of those who pre, be, becomes the mother or the father figure for them. Let's pray. Lord, you model motherhood per excellence. Help us to be, to be that place of comfort for people who nurture our young. Let your church be a place where the next generation is built up to love and honor you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.